Hey, I'm Jason. Today in the lab, we're going to compare metric and inch sized bolts, or maybe you call it SAE or Imperial or standard or unified thread. Metric versus the other one. That's what we're going to talk about today. All right, let's get down to it. We're going to do a torque test. We're going to break down how to measure these bolts, how to identify them and what it means when we do a tight. Let's check it out. So let's start off with how to identify a metric bolt from an English bolt. The metric bolt is going to have a decimal number on it. If you see a 10.9, an 8.8, .8, or a 12.9 on the head of the bolt, that means it's a metric bolt. It's going to have a metric thread pitch, and you should go get your metric socket set if you want to loosen or tighten that bolt. If it has dash marks like this bolt, there's six dash marks on here. The formula for an English or an SE or whatever you want to call it is number of dash marks plus two tells us the grade of the bolt. Six plus two is eight. This is a grade eight bolt. This bolt has three dash marks. Three plus two is five. Grade five bolt, leave it to the English system to do something way out of the ordinary. So that's how we identify bolts. You're gonna be able to tell by the head of the bolt if it's English or if it's metric. So now we're gonna identify the size of the bolt. We understood from the head markings, the dash marks tell us this is an English bolt. The bolt size is determined by the diameter measured across the threads. We measure that with a pair of calipers. This is 1.49 inches across. That means this is an inch and a half bolt, all right? The length of the bolt is measured from under the head. We're gonna grab our inch ruler and measure this at eight inches. So if I were trying to buy a new one of these, I would know that I have an inch and a half bolt and it's eight inches long and it's a grade eight. That'd be a great start to getting me back to this faster. All right, for a metric bolt, we got a 10.9. We got a decimal number on here. I'm gonna measure under the head in millimeters, 150 millimeters long across the threads tells us the size of this bolt. Switch my calipers to a millimeter setting. I measure just under 36 millimeters. This is an M36 fastener that's 150 millimeters long, grade 10.9. That's gonna get you right where you need to be in selecting the size of this fastener. Now let's get to breaking some of these things because that's what we do in here. So let's break an M12 bolt versus a half inch bolt and they should have similar strength properties and we're gonna read what the force is with this load cell. Let's check it out. All right, so we're gonna do a failure test here. I was gonna set this up and measure torque, but I don't wanna get confused between Newton meters and foot pounds for units. So we're just gonna measure the clamping force generated during the tightening, but I'm gonna manually take these all the way to failure. I got a half inch bolt here, grade eight, and I have an M12 bolt here, grade 10.9. These are very similar as far as material strength. The cross-sectional area of the a half inch bolt is slightly larger. So I expect slightly more clamping force generated during the tightening. Let's break this bolt with over torquing event. Okay. All right, first test, half inch bolt on the load cell. I expect to see about 20,000 pounds of clamping force. It's a peak point right before it breaks. Let's try it out. my Wheaties. There we go, you see the load dropping off right there? The screw's gonna break. There we go. Not too bad. All right, so here's the failure test with the metric bolt. Remember, this is about 10% smaller in cross-sectional area, so the load should be about 10% lower. Expect to see a little over 19,000 pounds of clamping force. There we go. All right, 19,100 pounds. Right? All right, so there we have it. I don't think we settled the debate between metric versus inch, but I know you guys have some strong feelings about that one. 
but at least we got an opportunity to show how to measure a bolt, how to identify it, what's important when we're talking about the strength and the measurements of the bolt. We also did a little strength test here to show how two similar strength bolts perform very similar in a failure test. So hopefully this helped you guys out. We'll see you next time.